everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Pro Tips, Reaper Pro Tips with Anne, who's mostly awake. <laughs> mostly, mostly. The caffeine is kicking in. How are you all today? Holiday weekend, right? Even though that's kind of weird. Justin and I were just talking about how it's kind of weird to have a holiday weekend when you're already at home. Happy Friday. Yes, it is Friday, dear Clement. You're right. <laughs> I know, right? Hey, Robin and Dick Clement and Clavicus and Image of Betrayal and Iggy and Mistim and Kuroniko and Inara. Good morning. And Freestyle and Robin. Not having a very good morning. That's a bummer. I know the weather is crappy in Texas, at least North Texas, Justin just said. That it is. Morning, and Margaret. How's Favorite? everyone doing? <laughs> Lovely shade of Tempest Gray, huh, Kurniko? <laughs> Lovely. Hi, Masara. I don't think I've seen Masara or Masara ever before. If you're new, welcome. Morning, Numbat. Morning, morning, morning. So here we are. So today... Hey, Planer. So today we are, uh, because uh, somebody asked if I would do the gap filling on the Spirit Beast uh, with the wings, um, we're going to speed paint the underside of the Spirit, Be Spirit Beast wings, and then we are going to attach them. I just want the underside done. I'm not so much worried about the uh, upside of the one I haven't painted, because I can essentially paint that when it's on the beast. It's easy to paint top down, right? It's probably going to be just fine. Um, but the other, the underside is a lot harder to do, so I thought I would get that done and then do some green stuff work. Uh, to get these suckers uh, on the beast so you guys can all see what I do, which is really actually pretty easy. So, you know, actually it's a pretty good lesson. Um, and also we have a, a secret lurker here. What are you doing, dog? Please don't have another Kiri emergency. So, all right, we'll see. Kiri's on deck. <laughs> so we have a we have a secret um, uh, lurker here in my room this morning. Uh, David is uh, off work. So he is uh, actually sitting across from me and uh, may heckle me from time to time. But I don't know if you'll be able to very effectively hear, hear him because my, uh, my mic is set to unidirectional. So, um, so that you don't have to hear like delivery trucks, Amazon trucks and things like that. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see if, if you can actually hear him. Actually, David, do you want to talk? Hi, how's it going? All right. So if you all heard David, then you can hear David. <laughs> Kiwi, settle down. Kiwi, settle down. Go settle. Come on. What's up? Kiri thinks it's very strange that I'm here. She also thinks it's strange that the door is cracked open. Usually I close it. Come on. Settle down. Don't make me nervous. Will you close the door, David? Yeah. Go settle. The door is closed. See? Boom. Door is closed. You must settle. I don't want the dog distraction this morning. I really don't. Yeah, I know you got to settle down. Yeah, she does think it's weird. Oh, you can hear him. Good. Well, yes. Everybody says good morning, David. Good morning. All right. Hey, Methophile. Cold. Ugh. Speed painting junkie models. Yeah, well, that's what I'm considering. Uh, I still think I was talking about this with David because Gloomhaven. The problem with Gloomhaven is is that you never know like what character you might be playing in the future games. So it's hard to plan ahead and paint ahead. You have to wait till it happens and your character retires or you decide to switch or whatever. And, and then you have to speed paint a, a model. But... But those are kind of like junky models, so I'm like, I want to convert my next character from a Reaper Mini. And it's just, it's just going to be very quick, I'm afraid. Yes, yes, dear Clearman, I know you want you want David to um, to come on and, and give a, a light a light lesson, right? Well, he's actually planning to do that. Um, we, we just didn't, we f kind of fell down. We should have done it today, probably, because he has off work. Uh, but... Uh, I know he was planning on painting a Reaper model on stream at some point. So he will be he will be a guest on stream at some point. And actually, it's good that you can hear him because it means that I can sit across the desk in his seat, give him my setup, and then I can talk also while he is uh, p painting. So that will be in the future. Fear not. I already hey, know what I'm painting. It's going to be Trista the White Wolf. I'm going to be talking about NMMs. All right. NMMs on Trista the White Wolf. Just so. need to like prep her a bit first. Yes, he is still prepping his mini, so yeah, maybe today wouldn't have worked after all. But at some point on a Friday, because he's mostly blocked out his schedule, at some point we will have David uh, sitting in this seat, uh, not me. A wild rax appears. Poof! Yeah, so don't never fear. We are still planning on that declarement. We just had to figure out how we were going to do it, because I'm honestly out of USB ports in my computer, so having him pipe in his setup wasn't working, so yeah. 
Uh, for reals spring? For reals? Are you sure, Sarduki? It is for reals spring out east? The minute you say that, you know you're going to get blizzard tomorrow, right? Sentimental minis. Yeah, yeah. Taking a vacation to do your garden. That's great. And paint, of course. Um, Numbat. Uh, oh, yeah. Sky Daddy is fantastic. Like, she's... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was saying, is that her shading on her body paint is actually about the same that you would do on a miniature. So, like, when she talks about like color choice and placement and everything and creating illusions, all of that stuff is applicable. So when we raid her, like totally, totally watch her because she's uh, not only is she a glorious person who is just totally upbeat and fantastic. Um, Justin and I were saying she really actually like likes what we do. So maybe one of these days we can get her to paint a mini. <laughs> all right. Yeah, we've had four winters already. <laughs> oh, Sarduki, that's so bad. That reminds me of Wisconsin. Where it would warm up and then, then you'd get dumped on or it would go down to negative 15 or something, you know, just awful. Yeah, she does have amazing energy, doesn't she? Image of a trail. Yeah, she's fantastic. I'm glad yeah, we no, found Skydad her. Skydad is great. Like almost a partner to the channel even. Oh, yeah? That'd like be cool. I'm, I'll be, uh, I'll find it, I'll consider it a victory when she's painting minis. <laughs> you know, body paint. She, she might lose some of her viewership but gain others. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know what her average uh, viewership is, but all right. Well, let's go to the minicam and get on it. Um, this is Friday and I love to chat, but boom, let's go. Let's do some wings. Let's do some speed wings. Speed wings. So I figured I would actually use my block and I thought I might just kind of spread out my sticky tack so I could put these wings down flat side and paint them both at the same time, which is a nice trick that you can do. If you are painting a mirror image of something like wings, that are flat, it is very easy to just stick them down a little bit on a sticky tack. And look, now we can paint them in a mirror image very, very easily. Little silly life hack trips, tricks. And also, of course, now I don't have to handle the wings, so I'm not rubbing off the edges. All right. Cool. Oh, is she, she streaming right now, Declarement? Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm going to start white lighter with the underside of the wings. So I'm going to actually use our mint green and I'm going to drop uh, about four drops of pure white into that, I think, and see where I start. Um, wings, at least of hawks and falcons and owls, are usually lighter on the underside. Other uh, birds, of course, do not have that feature. So pretty much paint these according to what your, you know, what your bird um, subject is, whatever you've decided to use as uh, your pattern for what you're doing. But since I did black tips on the outside of the one wing, I figured I would do some black bars on the underside. I also want to switch it up and not only go lighter, but I want these feathers that I made more purpley on the other side of the wing to go more pink on this side. So we're going to switch up our coloration just a little bit. But right now we want to get, hey, Otter Mama, good to see you. Um, she just agreed to paint a mini on stream. None that awesome. <laughs> Warn her that her camera setup is, is going to be uh, a little bit harder to dial in, probably. I don't know how much close-up stuff she does. If she already has a good setup for close-up work, she could be fine. Or she could just paint a bigger mini. Um, Sounds so. like I have to send out a uh, care package. Yeah, yeah, you totally should go over and uh, and uh, talk and chat, Justin. Oh, I, with, I thinned my paint too much. See how it's breaking up? Yeah, I it, it inadvertently loaded too much uh, water into my paint. If you're going to paint on bones without primer like I do, you must uh, keep your paint fairly thick. I can get away with a lot, but that looks more like a three to one mix and it's just a little bit too thin. So let's add uh, more paint so that it's more like an eight to one or a six to one there. And we shall see how that does. That should be much better. This is a very pale mint green. It's almost white. I thought about actually just starting with white, but I do like to start with a little bit of the color that I'm uh, intending to produce. And I am going to darken it, just not as much as the outside wing. So I want it to be noticeably lighter. So let's see here. Do I have? Yeah. So it is noticeably lighter. See, this is a very, very pale. You can still see the green in it, um, but it's much lighter than the overside of the wing. So that when we start applying our glazes, even if we applied the exact same glazes, it would never get this dark. It would stay lighter. So that is the, uh, the purpose of what we're doing here. Let's see here. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh no, you're right. I did Sarduki. 
<laughs> Thanks for the reminder. Yeah, I was in such a hurry to post that last night. It figures. It figures I forgot. Here, let me put a big sticky note in front of me so I remember to do it right after stream. I promise. I will not leave you afloat um, without triads for your ogres and orcs. Every once in a while when I'm doing a Patreon um, thing late at night, I'm just like, my brain cells leave me and attach PDF. There, I have a giant orange sticky note currently staring at me. I'll put a smiley face on it so I'm not yelling at myself, even though there's an exclamation point and it's all caps. <laughs> see, see, attach PDF there. That's my note to self. I'll put my note to self up here so I don't forget. There. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. I'm sure somebody probably commented and I just didn't. I check my uh, Patreon email after I stream. Usually streaming is the first thing I do every day. And I don't let myself get distracted by the interwebs before I'm done with my stream. Then it just gets me in the right brain space. So where we've got crossover here, I'll be using more pure mint green to shade around, um, probably after I've got other stuff set up. That's where I'll blend in the line between the darker and the lighter. But for now, we just want a nice solid coat here. So I've got that first coat down, and now I'm going to get the other one. I might uh, blend that uh, transition um, while I'm waiting for these to dry. Hello, Daffodware. Good to see you. The fifth Monday this week. Oh no, it's one of those, huh? I kind of had, I would have had that if not for yesterday. Yesterday I got, I woke up having had such good sleep and with so much energy that it was not a Monday for me yesterday. Today is definitely, today feels like a Friday. Like I'm looking forward to the holiday weekend. I really, really am. I'm going to do some cooking. Maybe I'll even get around finally to do some baking. I really, really want to. I mean, I did make banana bread, but, you know, I've been try wanting to try, like, gluten-free pie crust. i itching to try it so I can make quiche. But I need to experiment with it first because I have a new flour recipe. And also, I've never made pie crust from scratch. But now that I've watched them do it on Bake Off so many times, I should be able to do it, dang it. Yeah, that's right. It's just, just as easy as you see it on TV, right? Yes, exactly. I should totally be able to do this now, magically. Bake Off should have magically empowered me. Pretty sure it has to have power. <laughs> Maybe today you'll remember, Miss Dimp. Well, shall I plug my Patreon? Yes, let's plug my Patreon. Okay, everybody, um, since I, especially because I screwed up my latest post and forgot to attach the PDF. So let's plug, let's plug Ant's Patreon early. If you have not Patreoned me, I am working on the Dungeon Dwellers paints for my color workshop this month. Um, thank you, Inara, for, uh, you know, actually putting that in my head since you were talking about the coverage of them. Um, a lot of them, I, I just covered the first three this month, which is Troll, Orc, and uh, Goblin. And uh, so once I get off this stream, I will attach the PDF to that so you guys can get it. But my Patreon is patreon.com slash painting big, all one word. And uh, I do... Uh, Obviously, my $5 tier is all about MSP colors and paint in general and color theory and stuff. So, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Zewo, for putting my Patreon link up. It seems like the bot is going to uh, be happy. Um, oh, for pie crust. Yeah, I don't have a proper food processor yet, Astro Squee. I may get one for my birthday. Um, although that seems like cheating. Like, shouldn't I do it the old-fashioned way with the icy fingers and I dip fingers dipped in ice water and slowly working the butter? I actually have a, a pie crust cutter, so I probably would use the manual cutter. But part of me really likes the, the tactile thing about baking, like the feel of stuff and, like, learning the textures. It's probably why I like doing the same thing for paint, you know? Not so much with my fingers, but, you know, learning about the consistency and all with brushes. I just like getting getting my hands dirty and getting in there. So I'm going to touch this up a little. I suppose I should at this point put, out the, put on the granny glasses so I can see what I'm doing, right? No, do it with the food processor, Inara. Much easier. Well, first I need to get a real food processor. So I may have to do it the dangerous way first, just because I lack a proper food processor. Unless I make a very small batch. I have a very tiny food processor that is very clunky and cheap. And it is... Uh, really just doesn't do the trick and in fact it's like cases kind of cracked and broken so i'm pretty low low end with my food processing technology i'm afraid 
But you say using the food processor is the way to go, huh? Well, yeah. I mean, you felt that way until you started making 20 pies for Christmas deliveries. Yeah, asterisk for sure. I'm not making 20 pies. I am actually looking to just make a very tiny batch of pie crust just to try out my new flour mix. So that I know if I can, if I need to adjust it. Because I, I bake gluten-free, so. I do not like glutinous, glutinous flour. I do not have glutinous flour in my home. Um, though I am tempted to get some. Because it's, you know, sometimes uh, David is not gluten-free, so. Could make treats for David. It's like mixing paint. Use the machine. <laughs> Thanks, Sonora. <laughs> yeah. The rule for painting efficiency apply to cooking. Use tools to speed up things that suck to make more time for the things that are fun. <laughs> and you and you do the cooking for your family, don't you, Dee Clearman? You told me your, your wife does the dishes and you're, you're the cook. So I should take your advice then. Since making pie crusts apparently sucks, I should I should use the machine. Well, then, I, I guess that kind of makes my decision on whether I wanted a blender or a food processor for my birthday. I guess we're on food processor. And actually, I was kind of leaning that way anyway. Cause really? I, yeah. I was leaning that way because our tiny little magic bullet actually does a good job of blending. So, like, when I need to make, if I need to make, um, like, dressings or fluid sauces, it does just fine. It's just the thicker sauces that it has problems with, and a food processor would be fine with thick stuff. It's just the really liquid stuff you're not supposed to do in a food processor, if I remember. And it's not like we're making, like, frozen uh, frozen drinks. Like, if I was making smoothies and stuff a lot still, then maybe a blender would make sense. But I'm not. So, And, I'm, and I had a blender in my old place, and I hardly ever used it. Or never used it. Because for, like, pan sauces and stuff, I actually have an immersion blender, which I love to use. So I wouldn't even use that for... So yeah, I guess the food processor is making more, uh... Oh, Bullet still works for smoothies, Rupert and Collins? If you put ice in it, does it still work? Because I'm afraid that ice is just going to be too much for it. I'm going to blend this edge while my wings are still a little wet. So I'm going to use some mint green. To kind of blend my transition. I actually need some of my jade at this point, though, to darken that edge. That was a good segue from blending into blending. <laughs> One type of blending to another type of blending. Will it blend? The answer is, if it's green, yes. Um, okay, that's cool, Collins. Thanks. I didn't know if my little tiny uh, magic bullet would work for the uh, work for smoothies, but that's or frozen drinks, but that's really awesome. I guess it did work for your margarita. Although you did you did your margarita on the rocks, didn't you, David? So we didn't really test it. I did do it on the rocks. Yeah. So we should try to make a frozen margarita or daiquiri or something and see how it works. Or maybe I should make Actually, a pina. I hmm? think that's well, what Michaela uses is a uh, magic I'll bullet. Take the bullet. Yeah. You'll take the whenever bullet. She, <laughs> yeah, whenever Michaela makes margaritas, I think that's what she uses is the magic bullet. The magic bullet. So yeah, okay. So Justin, did you? You probably didn't hear that because you're listening to my side of things, right? Uh, right, David. So Justin says Michaela uses uh, mar the magic bullet for her margaritas all the time. So, so well, it should I work. I think we still need to do the experiment. We still need to experiment. Yes. If you're looking for an excuse to have a margarita, I think that that's fair, especially because we were just Absolutely. talking. Would I do that? Would I, Would you do that? Yes. All right, so I got a little bit of uh, my wing edge is getting a little bit too too light here. There we go. And I also lost some of my uh, detail work on the side, but that's just one of the hazards of trying to work a new area into an old area. All right, and I am getting a little bit. I am seeing spots that I missed, though, on this. So putting these wings on a mount so I could look at them from all sides was actually a pretty good idea. Let's blend up here. And I noted a mold line that I missed because that's always what's going to happen to you in the last stages of painting something because annoying. Maybe it is a Monday. Feels like Saturday to me. Feels like Saturday to you. Well, that's because you have the day off, turkey. Whereas I am hard at work here, blending wings or something like that. 
There we are. All right. Uh, America's test test kitchen says go Cuisinart. Ah, oh, but I really have my eye on the Breville. I really love Breville as a brand, and they get they get very high ratings for their food processor. Well, they get pretty high ratings for everything they do because they're really high quality appliance. I I believe that the Cuisinart is probably uh, a good workhorse though. They, I mean, they're a good brand also. All right. So what I did. Yeah, I agree with Anara. I'll just go back and after I've got all this done, I'll slice it off and paint over it with a mix of jade and mint. No, I'm, no, I'm really tempted to search Twitch for like baking and cooking channels. Okay, okay, Collins. Thanks for the. Uh, avoid using giant pieces of ice like through a whiskey drink in the bullet. But what comes out of the cube trays or built-in ice maker are no problem. That's great to know. Awesome. Thanks. Alrighty, so what we did is we did a little bit of a blend to blend the uh, dark part into our undercover or under uh, side light part and I still have a little bit of wet paint here. How annoying is that? Must be kind of moist out here today. Or it's just that it's a little cooler in the morning. I'll dab that off a little bit. When you do have paint that pools like that in textured areas on your bones, but you have a pretty but you're dealing with pretty thick paint, you usually can dab it off with your brush um, or spread it out a little bit without stripping it up as long as it's truly wet as long as it's truly in a puddle and not starting to dry already you can get away with that so what we'll do while we're waiting for that is we're going to mix up a color that I, I want I want to do a wash with this kind of a wash glaze like I did on the other side but I want it I don't want it as dark I don't want to use it pure jade because here remember we're trying to keep everything a shade lighter and because we started very close to white we can mix a light green and use it as a wash and it should work just fine. So I'm going to mix kind of a 50-50 um, mint and uh, jade. And as a reminder, for those of you who have not tuned in before, we are using these colors. I'm going to put some water in that. I'm going to put a drop of brush on sealer, which is useful as a matte medium in this case. If you want to know all of the, the uh, junk about uh, brush on sealer versus matte medium versus, you know, finishing you know, stuff or uh, what people call varnish, but it's not. Um, you can listen to or watch our other shows from this past week. We talked a lot about paint chemistry on one of those days, I think Wednesday or Thursday. We, we talked a lot about paint chemistry and color selection in general, so you're, you're pretty good no matter what day you pick. Ah, so this morning we're just winging it. Valandar with the pun damage. You're evil, you know it, right? Hello, Vaxar. And Belizacious. All right, so that's probably not enough to cover both wings, so I'm going to add in a little bit more jade. And I'm just using one brush full of each. I'm just mixing a small amount of wash here. And remember the difference between wash and glaze. Wash is still pretty thick. If you want it more transparent without making it really watery, that's what matte medium or brush on sealer are for. You can just add a couple drops of that and it will keep the paint from breaking. It'll make it more translucent without um, losing its uh, strength to hold, it, hold, to hold together. You usually still have to add water, but once you do add a little water, you'll notice it goes more translucent faster. So I'm just tuning this in. I want it to be um, solid enough still to outline my feathers. And so I'm, and knowing that it's going to dry darker than it or lighter than it looks, I'm like kind of wondering if maybe I need a little bit more jade in here. So what I'm going to do is actually test it up on the top of the wing, which is dry. Um, I do like to, when you mix, when you use a brush to mix paint and you're planning to paint with it, always rinse it and, um, you know, wring it out and then, then go back and reload it. Otherwise, you've just got so much paint on there that you're risking losing control of it. So let's see here. I'm going to get in focus here for you guys, okay? Let me see. Let me block off my palette and get in focus. That should be better. There. Can you see the winglets now? Winglets there. You can see that my, uh, my wash is actually... I'd say it looks pretty good wet, but we'll see what it looks like when it dries. I'll just put it over. I'm, I'm happy with how it looks wet, so I'm going to put it over the surface. I'm letting it pool. I'm using more of a dabbing motion than a brushing motion because I just want to get that paint in all those cracks. Oh, that was wet paint. You can see it. So the uh, depths of the wing betrayed me, but we're just going to keep on keeping on. And 
And you really want to load up if you're applying a wash. Like, you want a ton. If you're doing a small area, maybe not quite that much of a ton. But uh, dab it on. You want to let it pool. The point with the wash is to let it pool. If you don't want to pool, then you would be better off um, applying a glaze. You, technically, you can paint with it. But technically, layering is just painting with washes, but... There we go. So that has shifted our color. It has, let me get this up here and get it real close to you guys. There it is. So it's generally outlining, except for my light spot here where I had wet paint. It's, it's generally outlining stuff and it's pretty subtle. So we may keep that. Um, Uh, Cuisinart, 4-Cup, Cuisinart Custom, yeah. Brickville usually uh, rates lower Pendrake because they're pricey. Um, what I find is that they rate very high on dependability and construction and materials and everything else, but then they'll rate low for price because they're, you know, shiny and pricey brand. And they are expensive. I just love the brand. I have their tea maker. And we have their espresso maker as well. I used to have their mini pie maker. Um, I actually painted the uh, the dark side Twisted Oma, but I wanted to, um, people wanted me to do gap filling. So for that, I have to attach the wings. And for that, I need to at least have a basic paint job on the underside. So that's why I'm doing a little bit of time this morning to quickly, hopefully, Although the paint is drying pretty slow, so maybe maybe it's going to foil me. Physics is going to foil me. Um, but to quickly put kind of just a basic coat of uh, detailing on the undersides. Although just like before, remember, the reason we're doing these techniques is that it lets you paint wings that look pretty good, pretty darn good, without needing to have a ton of really fine brush control. Because at no point in this process of painting that wing did I ever have to like hit each individual quill on a feather, right? The, the most brush control I needed was to put the dark edging onto the, uh, the lower feathers. Ah, there it goes. So that's why I wanted to cover this because for beginners, wings are really intimidating. But if you just paint them with a bunch of washes and glazes, you can get really pretty effects. Um, and not have to worry about the fact that your brush control may not be the best yet. Uh, the, I think the most exact we got is we used the side of the brush to pick up some of the edges of these little feathers here. And then we painted just black strokes on the outside of these little outside feathers. So, and it's also pretty fast, honestly. If you're not, it depends on how fancy you're going on how elaborate your feather pattern is. But all things considered, if I had painted both, if I was smart and had painted both of those wings at the same time, it would have gone pretty quick. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm painting the inside real quick, Twisted Doma. Oh, you have a brivel toaster oven and you love it, Stephanie? Good. Good. Lots of people brivel fans. Yeah. Woohoo. Lots of brivel fans. Yay. Chibi Army says, Cuisine art is good, but honestly, if Brickville is what you like, get that. You won't doubt yourself after you buy it and will be happier in the end. That's my thought, kind of. I trust, I trust their brand, so I'm happy with their brand. All right, we're letting this dry a bit. And meanwhile, I want to mix up some pink because I want some of these end feathers to be pink instead. And hopefully these suckers will like dry like quicker than I think they are. And we can uh, at least, no matter what, no matter what state they're in, that's the state they're going to be when I, you know, glue them on. So, because I do want to show you guys puttying today. So no, that is the priority. So we'll just get the wings as far as we can otherwise. Oh, well, come on. KitchenAid stand mixer is like the top, like the epitome. I mean, I have one of those, Chibi Army. 
Like, that is, like, the, the heights of stand mixerdom right there. That's, like, heirloom cast iron right there. Nobody gives up their, their KitchenAid stand mixer if they have a choice. Pry it out of my cold, dead fingers is more like it. So it's a 4 to 1 magenta. Ooh, that's not quite... And now we see how strong that clear magenta really is. I mean, it looked like a fugitive color when we were mixing it with green, but it really is a uh, pretty strong color. Hello, Threads of Fate. How's your Friday treating you? I am making... I'm putting a lot more white into my pink mixture because I want it to be really pale. So this is, at this point, it's going to be eight drops of white to one drop of clear magenta. Yeah, I agree, Everlina. They really are. I mean, those, those KitchenAid stand mixers, like, it's great that you have your grandma's. But I mean, they still make them with super construction, and they're just so good. I love my mixer. Even though it's a pain in the butt to store, because we don't have... Um, we don't have space for it on the countertop, so it sits on the floor in the pantry because it's too tall for any of the shelves and it's too bloody heavy. But I still love it. Oh, really? You went to lunch with a client and found the best tacos you've had outside of Mexico. Where are Threads of Fate? Where? If anybody else in chat is in your area, they want to know. Oh, nice, Nomad Zeke. You scored. KitchenAid stand mixers are not cheap. I've almost got dryness on this side. Almost. Almost. Oh, you know what I need to do? This is really pale, so we need to be painting over my palette so you guys can see more like my, what my wash is drying as. Oh, nice. Mom and Pop Shop in Anderson, South Carolina. Interesting. South Carolina for the tacos. What kind of tacos did you get? I'm going to just paint right over this and hope that I uh, have mostly dry paint. Because I want pink outside feathers. Because I want to try something. Yay, pink. I like that. That's good. Tacos al pastor. Ooh, tasty. <laughs> sunflower yellow. I wish I had a sunflower yellow KitchenAid mixer. Oh, that would be so awesome. Like mine is black. Mine is basic black. But I am jealous of all those people with fancy colored stand mixers. And yellow is my favorite color. So on these feathers, I'm using my flat brush to paint them. To, to base them just because it's a nice you know it's a nice tool that covers more ground faster than my um, round brush I'm picking up a little wet paint here I'm actually doing a no-no ignore me um, because I'm impatient and I want to paint my pink down on these feathers and I think these actually go all the way up here so get that side All right. Oh, mint green. No, not at all. Let's not, Crispies. Like, you know, given my feelings on mint green, I know you're griefing me or trolling me, but uh, after this model, I'm going to not want to see mint green again for a very long time. <laughs> I do like light greens. I just like them more yellowy. I like spring greens. Like, yeah, you too. David is in spring greens also. Good. Like, that's why my office was that color back at Reaper. I haven't asked Sadie if she's repainted my office. I bet she hasn't had time. Oh, she has. Oh, has she? What color? It's, uh, pink and something else. You can see it on her VODs. If you go look at the VODs for Pink Platinum. Oh, cool. She, she, that's where she does the show. Oh, that's awesome. Fun. Yay. So, yeah, you want to see what the office looks like? There you go. I will be horrified, I'm sure, because it's pink. 
<laughs> yeah, it's pink and I think it's pink and purple or pink and something else. Oh, so she kept the alternating accent walls. She just changed yeah, the colors. I, I awesome. I she... Awesome. I figured. I figured Sadie would find time to repaint the office because I Sadie... haven't seen it in person yet. But yeah. I'm... She told me, and I, you can kind of see from camera, too. Awesome. So. I fully approve. It's not my office anymore. She can paint it whatever she likes. It won't look like Anne's office anymore, for sure. There we go. Touch up. All right. Oh, didn't Sadie say she, 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 she painted the walls drownable pink? That's what it was. Yep. Oh, that's more of a purple, then. Well, okay, I think we commented that it looked like that, but I think she said, I don't remember if she said she actually used drownable paint proper. Um, sorry, did I miss, did I miss together. something? Uh, yeah, Margaret, ask a question about brush on primer. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by, by drownable paint because, you know. Ooh, matte black kismet mixer. That looks neat. Haha. <laughs> well, drown nipple pink is more of a soft purplish color uh, with a lot of red in it. So it's not a real, like, not like this. Not like, you know, you're painting Pepto Bismol pink or anything. There was a house in our neighborhood in Wisconsin where I grew up that was Pepto Bismol pink. I was always like, why? Just gonna touch this one up a little bit. All right, now I have to let it sit and dry. Oh, it's definitely pink. Well, it also is the thing is um, when you shine a warm light on drown nipple, it can change the color a lot, so it can make it look more pink. <laughs> oh no, sorry, threads of fate. Twitch censored the word nipple, so it definitely made me think of something worse than nipple. Are the brush on primers only for the metal minis or also useful for rented resin printed? I used the gray one on the resin print. It feels a little tacky and the paint seemed to be having a hard time sticking to it once the primer dried. Um, if the, if it feels tacky, Margaret, then it had a reaction. Um, I can't speak for a resin print because it's not real resin. It's, it's, isn't it, David, do you know anything about 3d printing? Um, about the different polymers that they use, but they're, they're not resins. Really? They, they call it resin no, print. I think some of them are. The, like, the liquid prints are resin, I think. Liquid prints are resin? There's but are like they... some optically curing resin. Right, but it's different from the resin that we're used to, like when we get a resin casted miniature from, you know, traditional uh, yeah, resin. probably, because it's designed to cure with light as opposed to the normal resin that just cures over time. Okay, so, uh... That, I, I figured they were chemically different, so what that does not is tell me that they're chemically different. So if you heard David, he said that, like, you know, your resin prints are curing with light um, as opposed to time. So it's uh, probably different chemically. A traditional resin model that you would order, like one of the resin busts from Europe, you can use primer on no problem, and our primer is fine. But um, anytime you're working with a new material, like... PVC or or maybe apparently resin print, you, there's a chance that your primer is just not going to work that great. Um, so you always want to try it out, and and uh, your mileage may vary. I mean, it it I always test them, right? If it's not a traditional material like metal or traditional resin or styrene plastic, assume that your primer could have a reaction. Um, so those are traditionally our primer was meant for metal re metal resin or styrene. You could use it on any of the traditional mediums for miniatures. Uh, now that people are coming up with all this new stuff, then it's like, well, um, yeah, some primers, like there are primers that work fine on PVC that you could also use probably for your resin print. I'm betting that chemically they're similar and, uh, and they have something in common and that's why you're getting the tackiness, no cure issue. All right. Yeah, and now the coat of brown paint that you did is also tacky. Yeah, so you're definitely having a chemical reaction problem. The answer would might be to find a primer that works okay on PVC and put a sp just spray over everything you've done and hope that you don't lose detail. Um, that might help seal that primer that's having a reaction, but it also might further react. You might just, that mini might have to be tacky. Um, it's just, yeah. 
it is like that. It's un it's unfortunate, but uh, we can't vouch for our primer on like new new materials like that because we haven't tr we didn't test them, you know, with that intent, right? We tested them on uh, on bones and on on uh, and even then, sometimes they seem to work on bones and sometimes they don't with our brush ons. Some people have no problem with them, so I'm not certain. Um, I think our black primer we changed the formulation and that works just fine now, uh, no problems. So I mean, you could try our black brush on. That's possible. Um, and hi, Paul John's life. It's good to see you. How how long did it take Sadie to paint the office with that ten-aught brush? <laughs> hey, strange. Well, um, did not dare her to do that, so she didn't. Yeah, Douglas looks a little. <laughs> so all right, so the base of the mini right now. You were asking. Hey, Skelsey, by the way. Uh, strange. Uh, I haven't done the base yet. Actually, I was thinking that I'm I'm off Monday because Memorial Day. But uh, Tuesday, I think we'll do some fancy basing on Spirit Beast. I haven't quite decided what I want yet. I'll have to spend some time uh, brainstorming this uh, this weekend to figure out how I want to do the base. But uh, I want to. I almost want to do some forest or jungle. You know, probably foresty. Maybe with some like twigs, or maybe with a water effect or something. I don't know. It really depends. I'll have to find a base that fits him, her, and then uh, decide. All right, so my paint is finally dry and I'm gonna try something. I really wanna see if even with paints with a lot of white in them, if I can get the same bluish effect by putting my really light wash over this pink. Since if you'll remember, that's what I did on the other side here. I did magenta glazes and washes over the top of this green to get that effect. So now I wanna see if I can do it on this side. So I'm gonna use my really lightweight wash and I'm gonna do it over the pink and try to pull a bunch of it off. It is going bluish, but not as decisively bluish as it was uh, with the other side. So what I'll probably do is I'll let this dry and then I'm going to actually use a really thin glaze of magenta, of like pure magenta, just thinned down to it the within an inch, inch of its life um, to try to get that shift toward blue. Although I'm getting a little bit. I wanted to, I put another coat on because I wanted to make sure that this outlines my feathers. Because I'm trying to get that kind of cool, kind of almost opalescent look. I don't want to lose my pink. So we'll see. I'm playing with it. Yeah, I just don't know what, the problem is on a very small base, water effects are very limited. Um, Threads of Fate. So if I can't come up with a good idea for it, I won't do it. Alcohol strip for that mini that was tacky, Dark Angel. Yeah, that might work. I can't vouch for it, though. I, I mean, alcohol usually works on resin prints, but sometimes it can also, like, melt parts of it, depending on the... Like, aren't alcohols used to remove the striations on 3D prints sometimes? Various alcohols and, and stuff like that. So I'd worry that it might do more harm. So I, but I don't know, like you're talking to somebody who has no idea and doesn't mess with 3d prints. Kevin is the man to ask or Daryl at Reaper, but you know, you usually don't see them on shows. Ed might know. Um, but it's so esoteric a question. Um, you might be better off getting on a miniatures forum and asking, I'm sure there are, there are 3d, uh, printing, uh, Facebook groups or forums or, or reddits. They might be able to answer your question. And let's see. Yes, yes. Oh, that would be a, a house and car Pepto-Bismol pink. That takes it a little bit too far, Francis. <laughs> yeah. Acetone, not alcohol. Yeah. Thanks, guys, because I just don't know. Yeah, I know alcohol is used to clean resin minis, but Dark Angel, we're talking about resin print minis, which is not the same thing. Not quite the same material. And that's, in fact, that's the thing is her primer should have worked fine if she was working on traditional resin, but because it was a resin print, it reacted. So I already know that chemically it's different. And so I can't make that assumption. Um, I don't want her to wreck her mini. So I would definitely go and ask somebody on like, say a Reddit, it's probably got to be a 3D printing Reddit, Reddit um, friends, uh, or uh, Margaret, so that you can uh, do that. Oh, you mean printed? You have a printer? All right. 
Okay. Yeah, I wondered where you were, dear Clem, D, D Clearman. I know you had uh, you had a printer. Yeah, if you're printing it yourself, you should just like print some test models to futz with and see what works and what doesn't. David has a great idea there. Print a couple of little test pieces, tiny little test pieces, and just uh, just experiment. Yeah, I'm certain that people have this issue all the time. So, all right, let's get some clear magenta mixed up. And then I really do have to stick these wings on. And I'll just have to see what I can do. Maybe I'll do a quick side brush of white on the underside of the wings. Just to give it something to some sort of more definition. I am going to try my, my pure magenta glaze on these little feathers, though. On the, the feathers on the bottom. Because I lost my pink. I don't want to lose my pink. I'm going to load a bunch of medium onto this, i.e. brush on sealer. Ah, just walked in. D. Clearman says simple green is the best alternative uh, given the shortage of IPA at the moment. Got it. Ouch. Somebody really doesn't like IPA. Well, there's a shortage of it, apparently. Well, I don't like IPA, but I'm talking about beer, not cleansers. Oh, is there an IPA cleanser? What's IPA stand for, D. Clearman? In the I assume that's isopropyl alcohol. Oh, isopropyl alcohol. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, Just you don't want to drink that kind. Head. Yes, thanks. Thanks, Justin. You have more brain cells than me. Only slightly this morning. Only slightly. All right. So... It's been one of those groggy mornings, you know? Oh, yeah. Me too. A little bit, little bit behind the times with my brain this morning as well. All right. So I thinned this magenta down. So it's really colored water here. And even this might be too much. but And I use a lot of um, brush on sealer in it to make it more translucent, but still pool fairly strongly because I still want it to kind of outline the feathers. And I'm going to try to glaze this over what I've got and see if I can get that blue shift I'm looking for. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a shame when isopropyl alcohol shortage means that you can't do any resin printing. All right, so we're going to put this gently stroke it over the top of the area we want to be pink. And that is definitely giving me more of a blue shift now. And it's outlining the feathers more. So let's do that on the other side. I have a little extra paint on my brush, but I'm not putting a giant pool of paint on this time because I want to keep some of my underlying color. I don't want to overwhelm it all. That's interesting. I like that. All right. I might actually do some of that higher up on the wing, do some side brushing, call it done. Switching to my round brush so I have better control, so I can paint in just some soft shadows here between the uh, the wing layers, so to speak, the layers of feathers. Um, Sliria, uh, this is one of those things that actually I covered in previous, uh, things, but I'm going to show you. Uh, so one of the magical things is that if you have, a like a phthalo green, which is kind of a bluish green, like Tianzia here, um, and, uh, magenta, they make blue when you mix them together. So I used this on the other side. You can see it on this wing. That blue shift here is actually just glazing magenta over the dark, over the green. So let me see if I can get it to look a little bit lighter if I shift this out. There we go. So this bluish color that you see is actually not blue at all. It's me putting magenta over this jade green. Um, it's a special effect that happens with those two pigments. So I'm trying to get it to shift a little bit bluer. But since I added white to both colors, I knew that I might not be able to get that effect. Um, because I'm just, I'm thinning down the two pigments that uh, would create that effect. So that's why. Magic. Yes, D. Clearman. Yes. Uh, actually, I'm playing by the black primer. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Glad, glad that worked for you, Margaret. 
color theory. Yes, well, yeah, it's it's not even color theory at this point. It's just the way that two colors visually react together. Um, it's just a, a special effect, I guess I would call it. I don't know if that would be color theory. Like, it seems like color theory. You think so? Color theory is such a weird word. Like, look, I guess it is a color interaction, so I guess it would kind of count as color theory. I always think about color action, color theory being more about color harmony and composition, but I guess that yeah, there's there's really two aspects of color theory that both get that term. There's the understanding how do pigments and light mix to give you new colors. There's that branch of color theory, but then there's the composition um, and aesthetics part of color theory. Yeah. Just. Putting a thin shadow uh, using my clear magenta just down to get these uh, layers of feathers to look a little bit more distinct. And I kind of put a little, just a little bit of clear magenta all over on these little feathers on the side just to get them more interesting. And I'm really just painting a little bit of a thin line and then kind of feathering it in. Haha, <laughs> feathering it. Unintentional pun. Unintentional pun damage. Roll a d4. There. These are kind of looking like clouds now. <laughs> I'm kind of liking them. Um, uh, actually, the most dramatic effect you can get, uh, Iggy, is to use uh, clear thalo green with clear magenta, the two clear brights. It works with the Tianzia jade, but it doesn't give you as pure a blue. Because Tianzia has a little bit of yellow and stuff added, um, and a little bit of uh, other pigments as well, that makes it different from a clear, uh, pure phthalo. But it has enough phthalo green loaded into it that it uh, it works at least a bit. So I was able to get that that effect, which I'm happy about. I, I do like I do like this uh, this Pathfinder color a lot. So you know, if you don't have clear phthalo green, this is a good substitute, guys. You can do a lot of what you do with clear phthalo with Tianzia. It's just a little bit warmer and a little bit more opaque because um, it has other stuff in it. Alrighty. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Yeah, red plus green does equal gray. You're correct. Mm. Making Zero's giving us uh, equations for colors, David. If you look in the chat, if you're on the are you on the chat or are you just watching me? David's you know you know that David has a math PhD, right, Zero? So I'm bringing in the big guns now. <laughs> you've you've dared to type a color equation into my chat. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. Be nice. <laughs> I don't think that quite is why the the phthalo magenta thing works because you could take other um, you know bluish green pigments that look pretty similar but they probably wouldn't behave the same way. Yes, see, Outer Mama likes that you're participating today. Yeah, he's normally off on a call for his real job, but Google or at least David gets uh gets today off. No, yeah, they they gave all of Google a day off today. Um, it's supposed to be like a mental health day for COVID. Oh, well, that's really nice. All right, so I'm gonna do some side brushing of pure white, and I'm not gonna thin it, guys. I'm just gonna pure white is a medium body paint. Okay, so here's the thing. So I said before that you should thin your paint just a tiny bit for side brushing because you want to be more precise. And uh, if you use a very thick paint with side brushing, you can get globs. But a lot of Master Series are what I call medium bodied paints. And when I review them on my Patreon, I usually say whether a paint is heavy bodied or medium bodied. And what medium bodied is, is just if you look at it, it's just a little more fluid. It's not quite as goopy. And a medium body paint, you can actually get away with not thinning for side brushing. You just want to make sure you get a lot of it off your brush. Uh, before you try to to run the side of your and side brushing I'm just using the side of my brush it's like controlled dry brushing but you're not you're not rubbing all the paint off of your brush you're leaving a fair amount of paint on there and you're just running it over areas to get pick up the texture and it's useful for hair and fur especially 
And it, it is a technique that enables you to keep control, more control than you have with dry brushing. And it doesn't leave texture artifacts like dry brushing, where dry brushing leaves you that scratchy texture, which sometimes you want, but sometimes you really don't. Um, so it's a way that if you don't have brush control, you can still pick up on sculpted details. Just be careful, use a light touch, unload a lot of your brush, but you don't want your brush to be dry because the other thing about side brushing as opposed to dry brushing is that it, uh, it doesn't wreck your brush. You know, you're just pretty much painting with the side of your brush instead of the tip. And the reason you're doing that is because then the paint won't flow down into the cracks. Like if you're trying to paint this with the front of your brush, you very easily can poke your brush into the cracks and lose your control. So all that I'm doing on these wings, all of these techniques that I'm showing you are, are probably a way that I would start my wings. Like, and then I would go in and use more brush control techniques to bring out details if I was doing it for like, say, a competition. But this, all these techniques are meant to, for those of you who are like having troubles with your brush control, it's a way that you can do something that you might otherwise consider intimidating like wings without uh, worrying too much about it. You, you can get a good effect. Oh, oh, I think I have a Kiri emergency. David might have to take over and entertain you. Actually, Justin will take over and entertain you. But I see Kiri having that face and moving in that way. So pause here and I'm going to take the dog out and then I'm going to come back and uh, do putty. Okay. One moment. You bet. You here, Justin? I am here. Okay. Q emergency time. Three, two, one. Boom. How is everyone? Awesome. I've been great, I think. <clears throat> Fine. Allergies have been kind of rough, you know, weather kind of sucks right now, but not, uh, not doing anything crazy. We are kind of, uh, waiting to see PaizoCon cause we, we do want to make decisions on ReaperCon based on, you know, cons that are being done online within the community. Ones you know that were within what we we consider our uh, scope. So actually, we're looking forward to PaizoCon as well. Uh, my plans for Memorial Day: well, they were to go to the lake on a boat and possibly fish and or spend you know good old classic time on the lake. Um, but uh, that's that's kind of shot in the butt as of the. Like I said, the terrible weather, but outside of that, I think we're going to go, we might actually end up playing a bunch of board games inside. I might introduce my uh, in-laws to Gloomhaven. That'll be fun because they don't know anything about uh, those sorts of board games. They're used to like Monopoly and Dominoes. Huh. Um, no, we haven't actually been talking to Paizo about that sort of stuff they we've been kind of siloed in our own stuff for things we need to do um i've been trying to tailor to what we want because i think PaizoCon doesn't quite work as the, the same as like what we would do so we ours is more focused on the classes and stuff i think theirs is more like a traditional con in that they uh they have like panels and things like that i'm pretty sure because i know they put out youtube videos that are very similar to that which I imagine that's what this will be like. With other bonuses, I'm sure. Yeah, actually, uh, I have a funny story about board games. So last Saturday, um, our electricity went out. And it was it went out at about 9 o'clock, and that's because we live in an area where there's a, a slight curve and people, for some reason, and it's a common occurrence, can't keep their car on the road at this, like, six-degree curve. It's it's a tiny curve. It doesn't make sense. Um, but people might manage to fly off the road and then strike the transformer. And it has knocked out power to my uh, – electricity to my area. In fact, if, um, if Jason's in here, he'll know because I know he lives kind of close to me. Um, it just knocks out power to, to our entire subdivision. 
And when it does that, it doesn't come back on until they fix the transformer for like the ninth time in the last six months. Anyway, this keeps, yeah, it's pretty frustrating, Dark Angel. It is. It's pretty frustrating. Um, now, uh, that being said, this last time, the person who lost control and went off that, that curve, uh, it ended in a fatality, I believe. So that person was going really fast down the speed limit of a 35 road. So, like, that or they hit just right. But it was, it put our electricity down for about six or seven hours from 9 p.m. to, I think it was about 4 a.m. And uh, the, the some positivity did come from this, which was that uh, my fiance and I, we didn't have any lanterns or anything, but we lit candles and we played the DC deck builder game uh, by candlelight on at Saturday at like one in the morning. So that was fun. She had never played a uh, deck building game before. So. Hopefully no one was hurt, Sethany. That's crazy. That's, I yeah, you know, Dark Angel. It, it, you'd think it would be romantic, but we kept like arguing over what the cards said because we couldn't see them very well. So, like, candlelight sounds great from in the movies, but in application of trying to read stuff, it's very difficult, especially for my old man eyes. So, she's uh, she had less of an issue, but you know. Wow, that is insane, Sethany. <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna have to. It's got some follow up to it now because it's not the the first iteration of that. It's the second iteration, which they added a bunch of stuff to, where you have different scenarios meant to, I think, play it multiple times to kind of see what happens and it's interesting because that's we didn't i didn't know that until we oh because we actually opened it for the first time too saturday so we were all we're having to learn the rules at the same time <laughs> yeah no we we actually have had a petition that started um for us to yeah, yeah rules by well like we're having to read it and lean the paper and read it and lean the paper and and it was you know and and of course my fiance had no patience for that so she's she's basically falling asleep across from me kind of just getting bored out of her mind and but it was it was ended up actually being pretty fantastic I'm not gonna lie to you guys it was pretty awesome um we did the cooperative so there was no real arguing back and forth because last thing we needed was competition in the dark um but that someone did start a petition in our, our i believe our petition in our subdivision or some sort of call for action i should say uh for people to move that transformer underground so that they people just stop hitting it because it's happened like i said like nine times in the last 12 months or eight months or whatever it is Enough that uh, I don't even know how many, honestly, I don't even know how many fatalities have occurred there. Um, just outside of, you know, because there's also pole, like good old fashioned um, electricity poles there too. So you slam into those poles at the wrong, like it's, I think people just go too fast on that road and they just don't expect a slight curve. And they just, for some reason, they see a curve and they go, well, that's it. I'm uh, I'm done trying. I'm just going to take my hands off the wheel. We're going right through this curve. It's crazy cuz there's like um like 20 feet back there's like a house with a fence and it, of all these cars that have flown off that curve, they've never gone into that those houses back there surprisingly. And if I had um you know, a house over there, I would be a little worried about it. Especially if like my kids room were on the back side of the house. Where a, a smart car like Seth that he was talking about can come barreling through for no reason. But uh, all that aside, what's uh, what's everyone else's plans for Memorial Day? Because obviously, uh, not everyone here lives in North Texas where the weather's poopy.
Yeah, that's very twisted. Yes, cement fortifications. That would that's that is a way to stop it. And I, you know. Is everyone still here? I know that less of the country is on lockdown. Uh, I'm curious to know, are you guys still treating it like we're in lockdown? Are you not leaving the house as much? Are you occasionally venturing out to restaurants? Like what's, what's everyone here doing as far as um, precautions from COVID? Yeah, Dark Angel, yeah, that's, I feel like the firing was, was probably the appropriate action there. Ah, uh, looks like you guys are, you know what, since, since you guys are a part of our community and you're, you're very important to us, just uh, stay safe guys. Just, just do all the, uh, do all the safe things. Don't, uh, there's always time for painting and socializing later, um, in groups if you want to, you know, I think it's probably better to err on the side of, of not spreading an infection than, uh, or a disease, I should say. Yeah, don't lick doorknobs. That's just good old fashioned advice. I mean, you're gonna have to wait off. Uh, just hold out. I I know that, you know. I know that that uh, what is it here? I know that that Scott Bill loves licking doorknobs. Um, but Scott, we're gonna have to ask you to hold off. Like you just you gotta hold off, man. And D. Clearman too. D. Clearman loves doorknobs. Don't bite your friends, also good. I've noticed too that around here, there's still plenty of stores that like, they could, in theory, they could open up and maintain that 25%, but they've, they're still doing curbside, like Best Buy and places like that. Yeah, like I think I told you guys already, I think last week, I wanna say, when my mouse broke, when we were talking about gaming mice, when my mouse broke, and I realized, oh yeah, let me just run down to the store and grab one. And I was like, and I was like, wait a minute, I can't just, I can't just go to the store and grab a mouse or a mouse and look at them. Like I have to, I have to actually, you know, do some research and place an order. And it's kind of wacky that that's what's changed, you know. How you doing, Miss Ann? We're talking about, uh, you know, COVID changes and how it's uh, kind of changed everyday stuff. Interesting. Oh, and telling people not to lick doorknobs. Oh, don't. People have yeah. decided that as <laughs> things open up, they want to rush yep. out to lick doorknobs and bite their friends, but we're telling them not to. I lost you a minute here for a second, but I will totally tell people not to lick doorknobs. It's a very, yes. very bad or decision. Bite their <laughs> or bite their friends. Yeah. Yes, don't, don't lick bite candles. Don't lick doorknobs. Try not to do these things. Kiri, settle down. You have now been false alarmed. Like, the dog is like, I guess I'll go, but I won't poop. I didn't really have to poop. I just want to disrupt your stream totally. Ah, the dogs. Almost as bad as people, right, Kiri? You settle down now. You're all excited. Kiri just wanted to disrupt us before Memorial Day. She's like, I want my moment in the spotlight. Uh, she actually pulled her squeaky ball out of this room and has now lost it in another room, <laughs> Twisted Oma. Uh...
The dog was being a toddler. Yes, Chibi Army. Yes. Dogs are eternal to toddlers. That's kind of what you... That's, that's what you buy into when you get a dog. Oh, I hope it was a regular hornet and not a murder hornet, to be honest. I've heard those stings are pretty insane. You have never licked a doorknob? That's good, Pendrake. Don't start now. I'm just going to do a quick side brush. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of water because my paint got really thick while I hauled the Kiri butt outside. It's a beautiful Hello. day. Oh, go ahead. And correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't currently isn't the population of murder hornets in the United States confined predominantly to the Pacific Northwest right now? Murder I hornets. I, somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, David you know David's from the Pacific Northwest, like murder hornets. Are those like killer bees except hornets? I heard that was a new thing. It's new, yeah. They they came from once again, don't know how accurate I don't my think information there were murder is. Murder hornets when I was growing up. There were not murder not. hornets. Okay. No, no. They, Justin I think they says just they're new. They just came over from Japan. They just came over from Japan or something. So now there are murder hornets, and, and apparently they are confined to the Pacific Northwest. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they're two inch long hornets. Two inch big. long? Oh my God. Yeah, when you guys get a chance, go YouTube a video of murder hornets. They're insane. Murder, oh God, no. Yep, I, it looks like people are confirming they're only in Washington. I think the local news just wanted you to be terrified of something else. <laughs> the, <laughs> that's fair, Justin says. <laughs> Probably China, it says, yeah. Yep, yep. China, wherever. I where, guess, China, somewhere. where deadly animals come from, other than no, Australia. Australia. Australia still has the deadliest animal uh, thing, but they honestly don't let them escape their borders that often. So uh, they don't like invade other countries. Yeah, Australia understands about invasive species. Yeah. According to Trouble, it says that they only spread their range 12 miles a year, so they, they're very slow on spread. So it would take a, quite a long time for them to even make it, like, to you guys. Well, even, that's, uh, that's good. Us here, especially. I don't really need murder hornets in my life. That's not really something that I noticed that I wanted. The way I look at it, it's just something else for, uh, you know, other critters to, to to munch on. It's a new menu item. Yeah, no joke. Because they are still small insects, so. Well, relatively. Relative. I don't yeah, know. Exactly. I mean, I don't know what our natural insectivores are, birds really, but that's too big for a little bird to eat. Hey, all of the birds, hell, half the grackles in Texas would love those. Things. Yes, half the grackles in Texas could take on a murder hornet. No problem. So obviously we need to export our horrible invasive grackle species to the Pacific Northwest. Stop! No, <laughs> <not an invasive laughs> species. <laughs> I knew that would get David up in arms. <laughs> no, you don't want grackles. Grackles are terrible. Oh my god. I basically I flying rats, rats and I, I like rats. That every time people have tried to introduce one invasive species to control another, it has ended badly. So this is kind of like all those, like, you know, movies where they try to, you know, control, to use one technology to control another bad technology, and then you just get two worse technologies? Yes, this is going to end up with Skynet. All right, this is going to end up with Skynet. All right, got it. <laughs> Murder Hornets to Skynet today, our, our jump. All right, I'm just quickly side brushing the rest of this interior of this wing, and then I'm gonna say these guys are good. Uh, I'm gonna glue them on. Off huh? Oh, off camera. Oh, there we go. All right. Sorry. So, so that will work for now. Uh, let's see here. Well, I hope the starlings win, Samurai Jack, because you know, grackles are nasty and fight dirty. Okay, Canadian cobra chicken. Excuse me? <laughs> what, no Zeke? Like, seriously? Canadian cobra chicken? What? Almost all chickens are insectivores, actually. I believe all chickens are insectivores. Feeding them grain is not natural. Like, they're actually meant to roam around eating bugs. It's a great shame that many chickens are not pasture-raised and cannot help us control the bug population. But, okay, Canadian Cobra Chicken, I need to know more about this. That's ridiculous. Like, does this thing exist, or is Nomad Zeke just griefing us all? 
yeah, yeah. had me at cobra geese oh canadian cobra chicken is geese okay yes yes because they hiss you're right those things are horrible they will take on a human i have only met one nice one canadian cobra chicken okay i'm totally using that now I've only met one nice Canadian goose, and that was uh, a goose that was mismarked that actually had the wrong markings. Uh, and so the other geese shunned it because it was different. And it made friends with ducks, and then it made friends with humans. It was in my old neighborhood in Texas. So it had a recessive trait that essentially meant that it didn't have a black head, and the other geese hated it. Kind of like, you know, teenage humans. Shunning all that. There. Side brushing. Wings. Yay. Praying Mantis versus, version, yeah, versus Murder Hornet. No, thank you. Yeah, I am not a goose friend, uh, Sethany. Well, of course they're not that bad to you, Karinigo. You're giving them food. Dire, dire cobra chicken needs to be a miniature all right all right let's glue this thing together darn it there's already going to be a long stream because of the kiri let's see how does the fit on this one and then we'll check the fit on the other one uh this one that's right this one was gappy and kind of slidey and i thought that i might be able to trim off part of this because sometimes these posts are just too too thick like they're too deep so if you shave off part of them you can sometimes get them to go a little bit better. But this appears to have just a basic functionality issue. So there's going to be a big gap on that wing, no matter what I do. All right, well, that's that's good. We can work with that, right? That makes it a better example for stream. Yes, exactly. So we'll just do that one. All right, but everybody's still on uh, Canadian Cobra chickens, so. Let's see here. Where is my glue? There's my glue. I will get my thick glue out for this. My Loctite Super Glue Ultra Gel. Boop. And we will just goop. Goop some glue inside. Since it's not a good fit, I'm going to use this thick glue so that it fills any gaps. Because I know there are gaps. It also has the advantage of setting up pretty fast. There. We'll just do that. A little extra up here in the socket. Bloop. There. Boop. And here we go. So we're going to fit this on. I'm, gonna, I'm kind of going to decide what I want to gap fill. I probably want to gap fill the bottom. We'll gap fill the bottom, which means we're pressing the top. When you have an, 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 you know, an option of where to gap fill, um, usually choose the area that is less apparent to the eye. Um, if you, if you aren't invested in sculpting all around the wing. So I'm essentially getting a nice fit up here at the top with very little give. I can honestly disguise that line with paint probably pretty easily. Um, but that leaves me a big gap down here to fill. So we'll do that. We'll, uh, move this wing off of our little platform. We'll put our model onto the platform. I do like this block with sticky tack on top of it, as opposed to my other holders. It's not comfortable to hold, so it's not a comfortable miniature holder because of the edges, you know, the points. But it is really good if I just want to lay something down on the table and have kind of both hands to manipulate it instead of holding it with one hand. So here, I might want to hold the wing while I'm puttying, and so it lets me do that. So it's a nice little thing. So that's a nice big gap. Let's get some green stuff out. Your hobby is watching glue dry. Mine is watching paint dry. My job used to be watching paint dry in our. Now you make other people watch paint dry. Yes, now I want make other people watch paint dry. I know. It's contagious, apparently. Oh, yeah. Jason is definitely the one. Jason Weeby, if any man is going to sculpt us a dire cobra chicken 
And it does not surprise me if he did a murder hornet already. Because, Jason. I do have a lot of gook around the top of my green stuff, and I that annoys me. So I'm just going to slice it off and trash it. Sometimes the green stuff just gets really goopy and awful, and just get rid of it before it spreads to all of your other things. Green stuff tends to do that, especially the blue part, likes to leak out and attack. I don't think Jason's in chat right now. Normally, uh, if any of the sculptors jump in on my show, it's usually Bob and Julie. Because I'm often painting a Julie mini. I don't think I've seen Jason in here. Jason watches Michael Proctor's show a lot, I think. And of course, he's part of the, I, I expect he's part of the D&D &D group. Is that right, Justin? Correct. Is tonight D&D &D night? Nope. That is next Friday. Oh, next Friday. All righty. Going to get just a little bit. And this is frankly a lot more than I need. This always happens with green stuff. So I'm actually going to have that because I don't want to waste too much of it. I have a putty catcher, but... There we go. Grab some of that. Usually you want to grab a little more yellow than green. Um, you, giving it a little more yellow will make it softer, more able to smooth in to the model. Smooth in uh, so that it, you know you smooth the edge in so you don't get a break. Uh, so making it a little softer and yellower helps with that. Uh, if you do more blue, it's going to be more firm. It's going to cure a little faster. It's going to dry a little harder. But it also can be a little harder to smooth it into the surrounding model when you're trying to get that super thin stretch to make it smooth. Also, you want to do your smoothing part first because the fresher the green is, the easier it is to make it smooth into the model. Um, if you let it set up, it's going to start getting thicker or, or less able to be stretched, I should say. And uh, so it'll resist you blending it into the surrounding animal. Uh, putty catcher Sephiroko is a model that you keep around that you stick green on you keep around for the sole purpose of sticking green on it so for me my putty catcher currently is a base that I've been building so it's a rocky base this is my putty catcher so whenever I have extra green stuff left over I just build another rock or a bit or fill in a part on my base um, and eventually I'll put something on top of this base but I haven't decided what yet so that's my putty catcher. That's what a putty catcher is. A lot of sculptors, if they work a lot with green, keep a putty catcher model around. Like, they'll actually work on a sculpt. Jason Weeby's giant tree man for this latest Bones um, started as a putty catcher. Because he just simply kept sticking green onto it, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then eventually, Ron was like, I'll take that. Um, there are many, there are several other miniatures, big Weeby miniatures that started that way as well. Also, All right. if you need a really fast putty catcher, you can use this. Oh, yeah, yeah. David has a good idea. So he use, does stamps. What's the material again? This? It's called instant mold. Okay, so instant mold and other things. Like, you can make molds that you can put green stuff into, or there are um, rubber pads, like for terrain, that are meant to have green stuff pressed into them to produce something. So if you have extra green stuff, this would be another use for it. You can just put it into your, your mold and make more basing uh, textures. So, yes. Or you can have a putty catcher, or you can keep a project going forever, like my Frost Giant Queen, uh, who technically still needs green stuff put on her floor. So I'm starting out with a worm, because that's the shape here. And it's very sticky, so I'm going to try to kind of just plop it down, and then I'm going to use my sculpting tool to manipulate it. You could use a clay shaper or a harder sculpting tool. I have all of my sculpting tools right here. How handy of me. So, clay shaper is usable. I do the extra firm usually. Um, a wax sculpting tool, which I like my spade. It's got a rounded end as well. My favorite thing though is my tiny spoon, which is a tiny piece of brass rod that has been shaped into a little spoon. And I think this came from a sculpting kit that Gene used to uh, do for his classes. But it's very easy if you have like a ball peen hammer and some diamond files and a piece of brass rod uh, and then just a dowel to stick it into. So tiny spoon is what I use for refining textures because it's very small. Technically, I could also use the tip of my chisel here, uh, which is what I used to use before I got tiny spoon. So now we want to position, I'm going to use tiny spoon for this, I think. Well, no, we'll use the clay shaper. 
dipping my tool in water so that I can position it. And I'm going to start smooshing this worm of green into my gap. And as you can see, it fits pretty well. So smoosh as much as much of it uh, effectively as you can. I need to remember that I also have a gap going up the side here. Try to keep it off of like painted areas around it. You can, with the nice thing about the clay shapers, you can use the tip to smoosh it as well as the side if you need a softer shape. And mostly I'm going to push it into that gap. I don't want to push it so far in that it's, uh, I want to push it only as far as the surface of the wing. So I don't want to create a second gap. I want to have it be nice and flush. I don't need this extra bit back here because the wing is pretty close back here. So I'm going to grab that tiny bit here and uh, use it up here. Just gently re uh, the nice thing about the clay shaper also is the green naturally doesn't want to stick to it very well. So you don't need much water which means your green sticks better on the surface that you want it instead of like to your finger or your sculpting tool. Um, want to smush this down a little bit. Able to do a lot of setup work just with this clay shaper. And they come in all different shapes. I bought a, like, I think I have a six pack and they're all different shapes. So they have flats and chisels and rounded chisels and all this stuff. But I like my simple round for a lot of stuff like this for gap filling because then I can roll the side. See if I roll the side, it'll kind of flatten it out. But when I want to really smooth it into the sculpts, then I need a harder tool. So I'll take a metal tool that's like a spoon. Let's see here. Oh yeah, the dragon with the new neck. Yep, yeah, I suppose he would be a good putty catcher, sentimental. All right, so now we're gonna, let's see if I can get really close, really close. Let's see, focus. Alrighty. Grab some water on your sculpting tool. At this point, since you have your putty tapped down really well, you, you can put a ton of water on this. It doesn't matter. You don't want to use a ton of water when you're laying the putty down because if your water gets underneath the putty, it won't stick. So I'm just going to pretty much... Now this is where you press and stretch. Press and stretch. Press and stretch. And if it's tearing at all, you need more water. Press and stretch. And you're essentially smoothing your green stuff into the surrounding putty. Or into the surrounding model, I should say. And really, it's most important um, back here where the, where the hide is smooth. And it's less important up here where you've got texture as far as getting a smooth blend. But, you know, get it as smooth as you can. This is good practice. And I'm just using little padding motions where I'm pressing gently and pulling pulling the putty thinner until it makes a nice blend with the underlying plastic. Yeah, like, like so. So it's blending in very nicely. And again, do this right away with your green because it, it will get less flexible as it cures. And I'm going to do the thing where I'm, I'm going to blend it up into the, into the wing surface as well. And since I kept it in the gap, I'm not in danger of really uh, gooping up any of the wing texture. And of course, the nice thing is that once this cures, it's going to make the wing very strong. Not that bones like to really break anyway. And the nice thing about having a tiny spoon, the other thing you could use for this is just a normal rounded brass rod like this to get into this back area because you want something round to kind of roll, kind of like your clay shaper, but you want a little harder to roll this, uh, this putty in this gap here up into the wing. So sometimes I will not use tiny spoons. Sometimes I will use my more, more rounded peg. David, David tried Tiny Spoon recently and decided that he needed needed one. I did, yes. Tiny Spoon is uh, extremely useful. They say every sculptor has a sculpting tool that they use to the exclusion of everything else, and uh, Tiny Spoon is mine. Before I had a Tiny Spoon, it was uh, it was shovel, 
shovel was my favorite spade. And then I'm gonna just kinda, I made some uh, texture when I was pulling. So I'm gonna just gently pet the mini, pet the mini uh, with just light pressure to rub those out. I've got a nice layer of water on top of the green. You can see it shining. So gently pet it. And it's easier to now, whereas it's easier to pull it out and blend it into the surrounding area when the green is fresher, it's much easier to smooth the green as it gets more firm because then it's not going to hold marks nearly as easily. So that's something to remember is that smooth it as well as you can, but then maybe wait 15 minutes and then go back and you'll be able to smooth it a lot better. You'll probably be able to use your clay shaper to smooth it and burnish it. Um, however, if we want to put some feather texture in on some parts of this, this is the time to do it. Uh, Mathophile, what kind of math does David do? What kind of math do you do, my love? Um, these days I don't really do that much, but um, back when I was a math person, it was mathematical logic, especially computability theory. Computability theory. Um, yeah, Dr. Bob, heat will accelerate the time with green stuff. So if you have an incandescent light and you work under it, your green will cure a lot faster. Um, I usually don't find that necessary. So I'm going to kind of just create some little, little, um, pushes with the tip of my tool to kind of mimic this, uh, rough, uh, feather texture. You can always experiment with different sculpting tools to see, but this, this feather texture is usually just little pushes to create that texture. So I'm going to do that over here. It's not really necessary because I can just accentuate the edge of these feathers here that already exist with the tip of my uh, sculpting tool blade. And even then I might not want to go quite that strong with them. Yeah. Now, Matt, now you do more programming, right? Love. Yeah. More coding. More coding, less less pure math. Yep. Just a little bit of feather texture again. Just a little bit. Feathers are actually really easy on the small side. When you get to these big long ones, they get harder. But since you're just doing really little little feathers like this stuff to blend these wings together, it's really not hard. Get a little bit of a flaw there. I think we're doing pretty well here. I think this is about good. I hope Justin is catching a nap since I'm going so long on the stream. No, not at all. I'm enjoying that, uh, you know, we've, we've got some pretty consistent viewership and good conversation and it's, it's, uh, it's nice. We don't often have super long streams that don't end up feeling at least like they dragged a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I well, yeah. Take it. yeah, it's the Kiri, uh, the Kiri, um, phenomenon there giving us the, the that, dog break. Too, yeah. yeah. The dog break in the middle. That was the, the key. That's true. I forgot. It did drag a little bit there when I had to entertain the stream. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry. I had to rush her all the way outside, and even then, she was just like, well, maybe I didn't have an emergency after all. All right. But better to err on the side of caution. Right? Yeah, better than to have, yeah, than to have a butt explosion. so dog explosion. Old dogs, what you gonna do with them? Then she came back and went to sleep. So sometimes when you're using a lot of water and you're pulling the putty out like this, you're going to get little threads of green that are going to try to come up. Just take them. Don't try to push them back down. It isn't going to work because you've got so much water on it. Just kind of dab them off onto your little extra ball of putty or whatever you've got. Um, and uh, then you probably want to let your green set and the water dry before you keep working with it. Otherwise, you're just going to keep. Oh, the dog. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see if I can get the camera on the Kiri. Is there a Kiri cam? Let's see. Kiri, Kiri. Well, you see my messy room. Let's see here. Let's solve that. It's very blurry. It's books. Yeah, she's kind of over there. You see her kind of move, but she's very out of focus right now. And I can't get that camera to really, really go there. So, uh, no Kiri cam today, I'm afraid. Unless I grab my, I suppose I could grab my face cam, but then I have to smoosh it back on. Hold on. I might have it actually... I have it tacked down pretty, pretty firmly. So no face cam, no, no dog cam today. 
Because I'd have to readjust everything. <laughs> As it is now, you saw all my, my messy bookshelves and everything. All right, let me see here. So there's Wing. You can see the little, little artifact strokes that I did with my little tiny spoon to make it look like this texture up here. And then honestly, you just let it cure and you paint right over it. Like you don't even have to prime over it unless you want to. I might on this just because, you know, I started with a white base coat, so I might want to, to make sure that everything matches, but I just usually paint right over the top. Um, and so there, then we have a gap filled, gap filled wing. If I really want to fill any of this, now is a good time um, to take a tiny, since I have green still mixed up, like there's a tiny pit right here that I could fill. You can see the hole. I need a Patreon tier for dog pics. Yeah, my dog is really old, Heather. She's over 12. She was uh, 12 in January, so. She's an old dog. I did put a picture of Kiri in our, uh, if you're on the Reaper Discord, if you go to pet pictures, um, I took Kiri to the ocean. David and I took Kiri to the ocean last week and on Saturday. Uh, and I put up uh, Kiri pictures, I think on Monday. Kiri in the surf. So then you can see what my puppy looks like. She's a puppy. She's a puppy. She's just a big old puppy. Hold on, I have to make my green even smaller because I only need a tiny, tiny bit in that little hole. And then I need to convince the green to come off my finger. She's a senior puppy, yes. I'm senior. All dogs are puppers forever, it's true. They're puppies at heart. You've heard her squeak her squeaky ball. She squeaks it just like a puppy. She gets so excited. She is ridiculous. She is ridiculous in a good way. All right, so I've got that little piece of green now in there. And I'm just going to, this one I can really just pat and suggest a little bit of texture on to fill in that little gap. So it wasn't, I could, up here, like right now my green is probably getting a little bit too firm for uh, smoothing in. But since everything up here is texture, I can still use it up here, no problem. Alrighty, there we go. We gap filled the wing. Yay! And once it's all dry, we can paint it. And then we at least have one wing on us. And I have a little, actually, as long as I don't attach the other wing, I can still paint this one pretty well. So I want to do a little bit of touch up and add a little bit of detail on this. Um, since it actually is visible uh, when you look at the model head on, you can actually see part of that. So I do want to put my black barring on the back of it. But yeah, so then on uh, Tuesday, when we come back, guys, and have a happy Memorial Day, by the way, we will uh, maybe we'll mess around with some basing. Put some scenic basing on this guy. Does that sound fun? Sounds like a blast to me. S Justin says it sounds like a blast. Now, he doesn't even like to paint. So there you go. Basing sounds great. Sweet. Yeah, and I still haven't done a lot more. I mean, I showed uh, on one stream, I showed I'd done a bit more green work on my Frost Giant Queen base. So right now, I probably will take the green that I have and uh, use the use it to continue work on my my floor, which still needs more texture. Because that's my, that's my Frost Giant base. But, uh, still working on it. I'm not really in a hurry on it. When I'm really like a model, um, and I then I just have it sitting here, and I inevitably want to work on it more eventually. So yeah, we'll just we'll just play around and see what I have in my uh, basing arsenal, and maybe we'll do some interesting leaves or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'll think about it. Could be fun. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming on the stream today. I'm. It went late, so uh, we did our we did our due diligence today on painting. <laughs> Good morning, except not morning, Sabrigo. It's still morning for me. You're very late, though. We're about to wrap the stream. <laughs> oh, you did miss it. Yes, you did. You did. I know. I went. Uh... Uh, Pendrake, I decided against Ghostly Foggy because I would need cotton. I don't have cotton, and I'm not sure. I would rather do an interesting base and not just wrap it all in cotton, which is what you do for fog. So, super. So, yeah, I'm kind of kind of going away from, like, I don't think I want to do a foggy base. 
Yes, I, all of you have a great holiday weekend as well. I hope you had fun, despite the dog break in the middle. Yes, have a great Memorial Day, everyone. Exactly. Post pictures of your uh, cookouts. I mean, if we don't have a, a food porn channel on the Reaper Discord, we should. And I'll get, I'll go and I'll get that uh, that PDF um, put up right away on my. Uh, my Patreon. Apparently my latest post forgot the PDF, so I'm going to go attach the PDF right now. I have my note. And then those of you who are on the Patreon can go and read about uh, the Dungeon Dwellers paints that I featured this month. I'm gonna dab my green stuff over here. There we go. All right. Super guys. Justin, we have a raid? Yes, we do. What are, are we, we gonna... raiding? Give me the brush. Jimmy the Brush today. All right, cool. I haven't raided Jimmy for a while. That'll be good. Yes, don't lick any doorknobs. All right, everybody. Have a great one. We'll see you on Tuesday, remember? Tuesday after Memorial Day. Or, if you want more of us, we will be back on at 3 o'clock for Reaperland. Oh, in that's about, true. Uh, hour 45. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's so, right. Spread the Reaper love. Tell Jimmy we said hi. Yep. And uh, hi. thank you guys for hanging out with us this morning. See you guys.